Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to my channel, Canterbury Cottage. If you saw last week's video, you know that I finally got my craft room organized. And I'm happy to say that today's video was filmed entirely in my craft room. I hope you don't think it's too early to start on autumn projects because fall is my absolute favorite time to craft. And in today's video, I'm working on my favorite kind of projects, creating beautiful home decor using mostly just thrifted items. So if that sounds good to you, let's get started. For the first project, you're going to need some old cabinet knobs. You'll also need a few tin cans. I decided to paint my tin cans with some ivory chalk paint, but you could leave them plain. I distressed them a bit after the paint was dry. I measured the cans to decide what size labels I needed to make. I've linked my labels in the description box below. I applied Mod Podge to the back of the labels and adhered them to my tin cans. Paint your knobs orange. I used pumpkin colored chalk paint, but you could use spray paint. Cut pieces of stick to fit in the screw hole, or you could just paint the screw brown. Hot glue some Spanish moss around the stick or screw. I also like to glue on a fake leaf from my floral scraps. As a finishing touch, I like to take a piece of paper-wrapped florist wire and wrap it around my needle nose pliers or a pencil to create a ringlet and then attach that to the stem as well. Then I fill each of my tin cans with some packing styrofoam and then top it off with Excelsior. That's that fake hay that you can find at craft stores and at Dollar Tree. Then add your knobs and any other embellishments you'd like. I added bows to some of the cans. I also added some berries, some additional ivy leaves, and some of those foam pumpkin picks from Dollar Tree. Instead of using tin cans, you could put the knobs in those little crates from Dollar Tree. You could also use larger doorknobs and display them on candle stands. For the next project, you'll need one of those long candle stands that holds several candles. I see them all the time at my Goodwill for super cheap. You'll also need a box or tray that the candle stand will fit in. I cut the side panels down on my box and added one of those metal words from Dollar Tree because I had a bunch left from last year. Even though they were already white, I painted the pumpkin clips from Dollar Tree with some ivory chalk paint and replaced the stems with pieces of stick. I cut down some packing styrofoam to fit around the candle stand inside the box, and then I began adding my florals. Here is a list of everything that I used. Almost all of it is from Dollar Tree. I think the trick to making Dollar Tree florals look expensive is to mix in a few additional pieces, like this ivy from a thrifted plant and this lamb's ear from Walmart. You also need to use a lot of florals, probably twice as many as you think. Nothing looks cheaper than a really sparse arrangement. Create some dimension with a few plants and berries that stick out from the main arrangement. Finally, add Spanish moss to fill in any gaps. If you're using a lot of Spanish moss, you probably didn't use enough florals. Since I had removed the handle from my tote, I decided at the last minute to add some rope handles to make it easier to carry. Similar centerpieces can cost upwards of $100, but because I had the wood box already, mine cost less than $22. 
I could also easily update this for Christmas by pulling out the pumpkins and replacing them with some ornaments instead. Two of my favorite things to buy at thrift stores are old wreaths and old floral arrangements. I gained some really expensive floral stems by disassembling these old dusty arrangements. And I never spend money on new wreath forms. Every single flower and plant stem that I added to this wreath was taken from a previously thrifted floral arrangement or garland. And I didn't glue anything down. Everything stuck firmly in the grapevine wreath. And so I could use these florals again in the future if I got tired of this wreath. I did purchase two velvet pumpkins at Dollar Tree to add to this wreath, and I attached them using florist wire. I used a large needle to thread the wire through the bottom of the pumpkin and then tied the wire around the wreath. I used a floral pin on the back side to pin the two pumpkins together for extra stability. And then I created a large bow using orange and brown burlap ribbon. Let me know in the comments if you'd like a little tutorial on how I tie bows. Similar wreaths can cost upwards of $77, but because I used thrifted florals that I already had, this wreath only cost me $5. Keep an eye out for large flannel shirts at your thrift store because there are so many projects you can use it for. I cut out a rectangle large enough to cover the cardboard backing from a picture frame. I wrapped the flannel around the edges of the cardboard and then hot glued it in place. I then return the cardboard to the frame, and because I removed the glass, I added an additional piece of cardboard to hold it firmly in place. I spray painted these Dollar Tree words with some white spray paint, and I super glued some little blocks of wood to the back, which in the end probably wasn't necessary. I then super glued the edges of the word to the frame itself. And then I added a nail at each end just to make sure that it stayed in place. A drip of super glue left a stain on the flannel, so I decided to add some berries to hide it. I soaked some red beads in water to tone down the bright red paint, and then I strung them on some florist wire to create a hanger for the picture frame. If you don't like word art, you could use the flannel as a mat and add a traditional autumn print. Another thing to be keeping an eye out for at your thrift store are those 1970s wood salad bowls. For this project, I cut the middle section from the sleeves on the flannel shirt. Turn the sleeve inside out and then just quickly hand sew a gathering stitch along the smaller end of the sleeve. Close the opening by pulling the thread tight and then running a few extra stitches through it to hold it in place. Turn it right side out and then stuff it. I like to use a little rice in the bottom and then I follow that with some pillow stuffing. I then ran a very large and loose gathering stitch around the top of the sleeve just to hold the stuffing in place. I put a large amount of hot glue in my wood bowl and then I inserted the larger end of the sleeve into the wood bowl. And then I added additional hot glue along the inner edge of the entire bowl. Finally, I super glued a wooden knob to the bottom center of the bowl. Did you guess that I was making a giant stuffed acorn? I think this would be even cuter if my wooden bowls had been rounded on the bottom. I'd also like to see how they look completely stuffed with beans or rice instead.
I love using clocks in my decor, and it's so easy to switch them up and give them a seasonal theme. Pop out the timepiece, and you can paint the clock if you'd like. I touched mine up with some antiquing wax instead. Remove the glass or plastic cover. Then carefully remove the clock hands using needle nose pliers. Remember the order that the hands go in. Peel off the clock face and measure it so that you can create an alternate face that will fit perfectly inside your clock. I created this image on Canva and it's linked below in the description box. Use the old clock face to cut out a perfect circle and center hole for the clock hands to fit through. Use a glue stick to adhere your new clock face and then carefully reattach the clock hands in the correct order. Replace the cover and then return the timepiece to the clock. I also spray painted the metal ring black to better coordinate with my new clock face. I love how this clock turned out and it only cost me three dollars at the thrift store. What better way to add autumn decor to your kitchen than to upcycle an old or broken kitchen appliance? This coffee grinder was missing some of its parts but I thought it would be super cute, filled with some miniature pumpkins. The wood was pretty scratched up, so I gave it a couple coats of ivory chalk paint, and when the paint was dry, I distressed it a bit with some sandpaper. I painted some cheap plastic gourds and pumpkins in a couple different colors of coordinating chalk paint. Like I did with the knobs, I replaced the plastic stems with pieces of stick and hot glued a bit of Spanish moss to the top of each gourd. I hot glued some styrofoam into the coffee grinder and then attached the pumpkins and gourds to the styrofoam using pieces of skewer sticks. I also hot glued in some pieces of ivy vine and then filled in any gaps with some Spanish moss. I love that by using a vintage coffee grinder, I've created a unique decor piece that you won't find in any store. I was shocked to find this vintage postal scale at Goodwill for only a dollar and nine cents. I didn't like the face on the scale and was going to replace it much like I did on the clock, but the measuring arm would not come off. So instead, I applied antiquing wax to the metal face to make it look as aged as the rest of the scale. I then reattached the glass, intentionally leaving it in its original dirty state. How cute are these pumpkins sitting on this vintage scale? If you'd like to know how I made these sweater pumpkins, let me know in the comments and I'll include it in a future video. I also recently came across this vintage toaster, which I filled with styrofoam and excelsior and topped with my doorknob pumpkins. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I love upcycling old lamps, partly because they are always priced so cheaply at my local thrift stores. Lamps are not that hard to gut. Just find things to take off, and within a few minutes, all of the hardware will be removed. This lamp reminded me of the open wood lanterns that are so popular right now. I glued on an old lamp finial to fill the hole left in the top. I didn't care for the stain color, so I sanded it down to the natural wood. I marked where a jar would sit in the middle, and then hot glued on some fake leaves around the edges to create a base. I traced around the jar and then cut out a circle of styrofoam. I hot glued the styrofoam in the center of the lamp base, and then I began adding floral stems to the styrofoam. 
every leaf and flower I used was thrifted, many from this floral arrangement that I showed earlier. I even reused the ribbon. I attached the glass jar to the top of the styrofoam with a good amount of hot glue. I spotted this old berry garland and decided to peel off all of the remaining berries and then wrap the garland around the lamp like an old vine. I also hot glued some random leaves to my vine. I love how this lantern turned out, and I especially love that there is nothing new on it at all, except the styrofoam and the piece of twine tied around the jar. The lamp in this next project was a curb find that was already falling apart. I gave it a couple coats of ivory chalk paint, and when it was dry, I distressed it a bit. And then I just used the base as a vase and began inserting florals into the hole. I hot glued an alligator clip to the bottom of a velvet pumpkin and a bird to easily attach them to the floral arrangement. Before signing off today, I wanted to take a minute to thank you all so very much for watching and subscribing and leaving comments. I am truly shocked by the number of people that watch my videos. I grew up in a town of 10,000 people, and I just recently reached 50,000 subscribers. That's five of my hometown. That is unbelievable to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's projects as much as I enjoyed making them, and I'd love to know which one was your favorite. Hope to see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye for now.